we're good. Looks like the microphone is working. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Adam Cordano. I am 40 years old. Okay. And um, so, can you just tell us your story, and I'll and I'll ask you some questions. Okay. So, when I was about 13 years old, I was in foster care from six months old to 13, and I started like being rebellion. Um, I was in my first foster home, and I was nine years old. And I was with the Cordanos. Um, they're the ones that adopted me when I was found at six months old in an alleyway covered in feces. Um, my real parents overdosed. And the state put me into a foster home, which was Mario and Kathy Cordano. And when I was there, they were very violent. Um, they would seclude me from their family. Um, we would eat different foods. Um, there was times where I didn't like what I was eating. They forced me to eat it. I would puke because of the taste and the sogginess in the bread. And then they would make me eat my puke after. I puked it up. So I would like run away. Um, and they kept catching me, bringing me back. Then I would get hit. And then I would run away again. They put me into a different pot. I, they took me from the adopted family and put me into like a temporary foster home at the um, Eckerd place, John Eckerd, and I ran away from there. And when I ran away from there, my case manager, Evelyn Blaze, that worked for DCYF in Concord, they took me and she said, now you have to go to YDC because we don't have a place to put you. So they ended up bringing me at the age of 13 to YDC. And when I went to YDC, I was put into East Cottage is where I first went. East Cottage when I first got there the first night and when I got to East Cottage they put me into a room I was locked down for 24 hours a day I would go out like if I needed to use the bathroom I had to bang on the door and they would let me out to use the bathroom um, from East Cottage I was there for about 30 days because that's where you like they do your like orientation and stuff like that and decide where you're going to go if you're going to go to King Cottage or if you're going to go to Spalding Cottage so I went from East to Spalding Cottage. In Spalding Cottage, I was about, I was still 13. Um, I went into Spalding Cottage, and in that Spalding Cottage, they used to make us fight each other naked. The staff, they would get us together, and the babies, you'd like, we'd walk into Spalding Cottage, you'd walk downstairs, to the right was the kitchen, to the left was like the, like the living room, the showers, and then past the showers, there was like a closet that was kind of like the size of this room. And they would make us go in every night, and they would get us naked, and they would watch us fight each other naked. The staff would. They would videotape it. Um, so that was going on there. Um, we would have to like, if we refused to do it, they would bring us into our room. They would lock us down for 24 hours with nothing. No food, no water, no drinks, nothing. So that went on for about... Eight months, I did that, and then I graduated. Like I did well there. Like they bring us to school. And when they bring us to school, they'd cuff us up. We'd go to school, and then like I wouldn't understand stuff because I had a hard time learning. Like I was like kind of like bit, like not very good with like education. I didn't understand it. So like I wouldn't do my homework. Like I wouldn't do the work because I didn't understand it. And then I'd ask for help, and they were like, "Well, we're teaching a class. We can't just dedicate our time to you." So they would take us and bring us to King Cottage and put us in a holding cell because we didn't we didn't do or just do in school. So they would take us from the school and they'd bring us to King Cottage. We'd go into a room, they'd cuff us to a pole, and we would stay there for about the rest of the remainder of the day. We'd be cuffed to a pole, and then so I went from Spalding Cottage to Stark House. At the age of fourteen, I was at Stark House. At Stark House. Stan Watson was a third night, third shift worker. He'd come in from 11 to 7 in the morning. So I remember the first night that I was there because my door opened and he says, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing all right. He goes, you need to come with me and we need to get you blankets and stuff like that from the linen closet. So I'm like, well, I already have blankets and stuff. He goes, no, 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 you just come follow me. 
like that's kind of weird. I already have blankets and everything. So I go to the end. So it's a hallway. You have the south wing and a north wing. I was in the south wing. And at the end of the wing, there's a closet. And he brought me in there. And he says, okay, so this is what's going to happen. He goes, you're going to get straight. You're going to take all your clothes off. He goes, and nothing's going to be said here. Because if anything's said, you're going to go to King Cottage. And you're not going to have the privilege of being here. It was like a... It was like a, the best place to be. Stark House was like off property. You weren't locked down. It was like a privilege to be there. And he says, and if you cooperate and do what I say, you'll get gifts. I'll bring you in subs. I'll do this and that and that. And I said, okay. So I get naked. And he's like, now I want you to do me a favor and I want you to perform oral sex on me. He goes, and if you don't, like I told you, and he takes the handcuffs off. You see, they wear handcuffs. He goes, I'm going to cuff you up and I'm going to bring you to King Cottage. So I'm like, okay. So I cooperated, so I would do that. Every night, he would come in, and he would do have me do fellatio. One night, he comes in, he says, now I'm going to have anal sex with you. And I said, no, I can't do that. He goes, no, you're going to do it. He took a sheet, and he wrapped it around my mouth, and he, like, tied it so I couldn't scream. He bent me forward, uh-huh. and he inserted himself in me. And he did that for, like, 45 minutes, and, uh-huh. and I was bleeding. Uh-huh. I tried asking for medical help, and he said, no, there's no medical help. He grabbed a tampon, and he said, take this and put it in your your anal, and then I'll check on you in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I was, like, shaking. It hurt so bad. Um, and this went on for a year straight. A year straight, and this went on. I went to Joe Peters. Mr. Peace, I mean. That's Mr. Peace, I don't know his first name, but he was, like, the unit manager. And I went into his office and I said, I have an issue. And he goes, what's the issue? I said, I'm being raped. He said, that doesn't happen in my building. He goes, if you say that, I'm going to put you in King Cottage for lying. Do you want to leave this place? I said, no. I said, I'm being raped though. He goes, what is the proof? I said, well, I said, I call medical. He goes, I'm not going to call medical. He goes, I'm going to talk to Stan. That's who you're saying did it, correct? I said, yeah. He goes, all right, I will, I will inquire this. So I said, all right, cool. He's going to inquire it. That night, Stan comes in after I reported to him, and he beat me. Like, he beat the shit out of me, and then he forcibly raped me. And he goes, how did that work for you? He goes, that complaint was unfounded. You do it again, this will be worse. So this just kept happening and happening. So I got to the point where I submitted to him so that I didn't get raped. So that it was, like, less painful in my mind. And he started, like, bringing me in subs and he'd bring me in like special bars of soap he tried bribing me every time so this went on for a year straight and then uh, one day he's like I'm gonna take you to like this was in 14 to 15 and then I went to Spurlink which was a group home so I went from YDC to Spurlink and then at Spurlink I got some, some trouble so they ended up sending me back to YDC when I was 16 and at 16, they put me in Spalding. And in Spalding, I didn't, nothing really bad happened that when I went back when I was 16. But then they shipped me back to, Star, to Stark House. And that's where Stan worked. And he's like, and that continued to happen. Like, he continued to molest me. He continued to rape me. Um, he was the only staff member that worked at night at Stark House. During the day, they had three. At night, they only had one. So he's like, well, this is what's going to happen. I said, what? He goes, I'm going to take you into my house. I'm going to leave my job, and I'm going to get it so that you're going to come with me. I said, no, I don't want to. <clears throat> so he contacted my case manager, my caseworker, Evelyn Blaze, who worked at that time for State of New Hampshire, TCYF, and said, look, I'm going to take him. I'm going to leave my position. I'm going to take him. Is that okay with you? And she says, well, you have to be certified be a foster parent but because you work for the state of New Hampshire I'll overlook that and I'll allow you to take them and she comes to me later on that day and she says okay so this is the plan you're going to transition from Stark House and Stan's going to take you into his house as a foster parent I said no he's raping me he's molesting me she goes what are you talking about there's nothing here that says that this happened there's a couple complaints that you made that, Joe, that Mr. Peace looked into and they were unfounded. So we're not believing this story. You're just trying to be defiant. And if you want to be defiant, 
then you're going to go to King Cottage, you're going to have a stay order where that means you're not going to leave. You're going to be stuck there. Or you can go with him. Your choice. And I said, well, you guys are forcing me to go here now. And they're like, no, we're not forcing you. This is the best choice for you. This is the safest thing. We're trying to transition you back into society. You're not going to be living here all your life. So I went. So I went into his house. And he got it where I went wherever he went. So I was 16 years old when I went into his house. He got me a job with him at Hesser College cleaning third shift. I couldn't go anywhere without him right next to me so that I couldn't say anything to anybody. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't go to the store without him. I couldn't go anywhere. So I went to start working with him at um, Hesser College. Every night he'd get drunk. He'd have me drink beer with him, nat natural light, and then he would rape me. He liked raping me. He would set up a tripod like this and videotape it. Um, I actually ended up meeting a chick at Hesser College that I liked, and I started dating her. He found out about it, and that was a big mistake. Like, he made it so that she couldn't come on the property, put in no contact. Um, it got so bad where I, got, I was at Pembroke Academy. I went to Pembroke Academy for school, and I actually reported to the resource officer, um, Kevin Little. Was it? No, not Kevin. Kevin Smith was his name, I believe. Officer Smith. And I reported it to him. Well, he went to his sergeant. His sergeant went to Stan, talked to Stan about it. They found it unfounded. They didn't believe it. Because he brought up the fact that I made this allegation at YDC. It was unfounded. Evelyn Blaze backed him up, saying, no, he has a problem lying. This never happened. So no one believed me. So I got to the point where I got together with a couple of kids from school. And I said, listen, we're going to go to the house. I know where the guns are. We're going to rob the house, and I'm going to put him at gunpoint. Maybe that'll work so I can get out of here. So I went to the house. It was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I knew he was going to be back by 7.30 from Hester College because when I was at school, I couldn't go work with him at Hester College, but he continued working. So when he got home, I put a shotgun to his head, and I threatened to kill him. We took off with the guns. We took off with his truck. He called 911. We got chased. A cop called my phone. That's what it was. Um, Officer um, Mulligan called my phone and said, what is going on? I said, I'm doing this because I've been being raped. I've been being molested. I said, I'm reaching out for help. I'm crying out for help. He goes, where are you right now? I said, I'm at Epsom Traffic Circle. So I took off on Route, we just lived on Route 3 or Route 4, where that is, where Allenstown and Barrick State Park. I think it's Route 4 or something like that. We lived on 60 Clement Road. So I took off heading towards Epsom. And he goes, go to the nearest store at the Epsom Traffic Circle and wait for me. I said, all right. So I go there, and I'm waiting. An Epsom cop pulls up. I had, like, this big chain on trying to look all cool because I was young and stuff like that. So the cop comes in. He notices me. He notices the truck. He grabs me, throws me on the ground because he knows that there's a gun involved. He cuffs me up, everything like that. The Allenstown cop pulls into the uh, Epsom gas station where I'm at. He takes me and puts me in the car. He drives me back and he goes, what's going on on the way back? I said, I did it because he keeps raping me and molesting me. I said, I, I, no one listens, no one cares. I said, I'm, I said, I don't care at this point. So I figured if I broke the law, I'd get arrested and be able to get away from him and go to jail. He goes, well, you are getting arrested. He goes, you had a stolen firearm and breaking and entering. And the other two that you're with, they're getting arrested too. So he drives me to the police department. I'm in the police department for like 45 minutes. Stan and his dad, who was the chief of police in Merrimack um, County, in Merrimack, he comes in and they look at me, give me like a disgusting look. They walk into Captain Mount Pleasure's office, shuts the door. They're in there for like about 45 minutes. Then I remember his dad comes out and he walks over and he looks at the cop and says, uncuff him. And he uncuffs me. I'm like, this is weird. He says he's not even a cop in this in this city, in this town, and he's ordering the cop to uncuff me. I'm like, that's what I said. I'm in for it now. So they uncuff me, and Ma Captain Mount Pleasure comes out and goes, this is your lucky day. He goes, you're going to be going home, but these two are going to jail. He looks at the other cops and say, book them too. The he's going home. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I walk out, and we get into his dad's truck, and his dad gets in. He gets in, shuts the door. 
they're pulling away. It's quiet for the first three minutes. Stan doesn't say anything. His dad turns, looks at me, and says, you're going to keep your mouth shut. This never happened. You're not going to get charged. He goes, but if you ever say anything about what my son is doing to you, no one's going to believe you, and you're not going to, I'm going to make sure you don't see the light of day. Do you understand me? I said, yeah, I guess I understand. So I went back to the house. His dad drops him off, and then fucking, I get stuck there that night. I'm sitting on the couch. He's out talking with his dad on the porch. I remember that. And then I hear him come in and shut the door. He waits for his dad to pull off and, like, go down a long dirt road. And he turns around. And he goes, so you like stealing guns and stuff and putting guns in my face, huh? So he goes in the bedroom. He grabs a shotgun that I didn't touch. He takes the shotgun, takes the butt of the shotgun, hits me in the face with it. I'm, like, seeing stars now. And then he takes the gun. He puts it in my mouth. He goes, how do you like it? How do you like that feeling? I said, I don't like it at all. He goes, well, you're going to fucking submit to me tonight. And then, like, he put me in a chokehold. And then, like, almost had me passing out. And I almost shit my pants. Threw me on the ground. Ripped my clothes off. He pushed me, like, to the floor. And then, like, pulled my pants down. And just inserted himself so hard into me. It was it hurt so bad. And he did that for, like, 45 minutes straight. And I was just, like, crying for help. And I couldn't get any help. And, like, I remember running out of the house with my pants off. And I ran to the neighbor's house. And I banged on their door. And they answered it. And they're like, what is going on? And I was butt naked, bleeding. And she took me into the house. And she said, we need to call the police. And her husband said, no, we're not getting involved with this. He called Stan up. Told him I was there. Stan came and grabbed me, and they brought he brought me back to the house, and nothing happened. Can I can I stop you there? Cause I, it's been a while, and I just wanna um, I just wanna say thank you so much um, for telling us that, and I just wanted to um, get into kind of about YDC and how you know um, how you felt as a child there, because you kind of moved on past that. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to know, you know, you were there for how many years? Two years. Two years. And, you know, I mean, how did, I mean, you were, you were raped the entire time yeah. while you were there. And then they asked you to go to, they said that if you were not, you, you got to stay in this one place that was nice, but if you didn't continue raping, you'd be put into King Cottage. Correct. And that's the. So it's like the maximum security. That's where I was. That's where you were. That's where the the worst of the worst kids and the violent kids and the bigger kids, for the most part. And is there anybody that would be able to? Is there anybody that in that place that would stand up for any 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 child? Well, there was like someone I don't remember what her name was, but she was like she worked there, and now she works for state police. And when this was first reported. She said, I was waiting for you to come forward because I knew this was going on. You know what I mean? But she never, like, did anything until it was reported. You know what I mean? She was a witness to, like, the abuse and stuff like that. And so did she, she report other people? She, re- no. she Did she come forward now? She came forward now, yeah. She came forward now, <clears throat> and she stated how the staff were abusing the, 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 the kids and stuff like that. But she didn't want to be... The whistleblower. Right. She didn't want to be the whistleblower. So when Dave Meehan came forward, she said, I was waiting for someone to come forward because I knew this was going on, but I couldn't do anything until someone came forward and said something. Because she was the original investigator when it was first reported to the state police. But, I mean, was there anybody in the house? No, nobody in the house, no. Everybody was just in on this? Everybody was in on it. And it was like a tight cult. Nobody, nothing went outside YDC walls, and they all covered for each other. And what about the kids? Did the, all the other kids know what was the going kids, on? The kids, absolutely, they knew. They were like terrified. They were like hiding. They they just tried acting on their best behavior. They knew when it was time for us to fight naked and stuff like that. Like it basically, they were like used to it. They got used to it, and they knew if they cooperated, it'd be less. You know what I mean? If they didn't cooperate, it was worse. So they 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 learned to live with it. Like, they but they w- got out of the system, and then they they 
they there weren't people that reported it. No one reported it though. They They're were, too uh, afraid. I believe they were afraid, and they were brainwashed. You know what I mean? They were at the point where they said, "No one's gonna listen to us." Because no you reported it, right? And no. it, I'm sure some other you re- kids you did. You reported right? it when you got out. I reported it when I got out, and they didn't believe me. You know what I mean? It got to the point where like you report it so much, and people put a label on you, and people will say, "Oh, it was cleared. We already investigated it. Nothing happened." So they say that the more times you have someone saying that they investigated it and nothing happened and, and nothing was founded, the less they believe you. Because you already have that marked on your record. Right. You know what I mean? So they've already labeled you as a liar, mm-hmm. as a fabricator. Malingerer. Right. So now when you go to report it, they look at your file and say, okay, this juvenile has reported this on this date. We inv- YDC investigated it. DCYF, Elgin and Blaze, investigate it, was found not to be true. So now they look at it and say, okay, this kid has an issue. He needs mental making health. Making it up. He's making it up. So now he needs to go see a psychiatrist. Something's wrong with him. Now it's all on me. Something's wrong with me. Not the, not the predator. Not the person doing it. It's me now. So you learn to bury it. And, and you, didn't, you can't do anything about it. Can't today. do anything about it. So like when I got older, I just started using drugs because I had to push that pain deep down in me. And cover it up because I was having outbursts. I was having emotional issues. I was having night terrors. You know, there was points where like I would get violent because no one would listen. And then when I got violent, they would say, "See, he has an issue. He's violent. Now we need to lock him up." You know. So it was just a never-ending cover up. They covered their tracks. You know what I mean? Like, if the Manchester police was never called in. State police was never called in when we were in YDC when these were reported. It was all investigated by their own people. And their own people already knew what was going on. You know, there was a whole, like, clique of people that worked there that were involved on this. You know what I mean? Like, they got they hired pedophiles, and they worked for the state, so they thought they were untouchable. So how many have been charged? Eleven people have been charged. Eleven Only former 11. staff members. That's I it. thought it, it, it's like in the news it says something like 150 employees implicated. No, there was 150 implicated, but only 11 arrested and charged. Eleven because they were directly, they're not charging the people that were covering it up. Correct. And not reporting it because now they're, hopefully they come out and. They're only charging the people that sexually assaulted and physically abused the children. So, the, but if they witnessed it, they have a responsibility, is that right? Absolutely, they have a responsibility to report it. To if they didn't it. report it, then they should get in trouble for not re- yeah, doing their job. That, and that covering it up. Is that a crime as well? That is a crime, but New Hampshire, they're, the AG's office, they're like basically trying to like say like, you know, it's been so long, now they want to come forward. Formella? Their, their statute, is it John yeah, Formella? Their statute of limitation has run out now, like for assault. Simple assault, like let's say you got a kid got beaten by a staff member. They only have six years to report it. That's what they're claiming. Right. That's what this. That, right. That's the. But they made a law when this happened. They made a law saying that the statute of limitation for sexual assault. They made it. There is no statute of limitation before there was, but because this went on and they had proof of it, they actually brought a new bill in saying now we have no statute of limitation. Since since 1978, right, right, that it's been going on? Has it 1930. Been? 1930. These things have been going on since 1930. Right. And even the governor at 1930 stated that he knew what was going on. Like, women were getting beaten with sticks and water tortured and all this stuff. I, I don't know anything about that. I just read about that. I can only say what I, happened to me when I was there. But it was going on way back then, and they tried reporting it, and nothing happened. So if it's there's such a record since 1930, like what? Why would the state why, cover it up? Why would they state? Yeah, why would the state cover it up? And why would? Because they're all implicated in it. So why would they want to give themselves up? You know what I mean? They had a responsibility to keep us safe. The DCYF was supposed to keep children safe. We have a right to an education. We have a right to food. We have a right to water. We have a right to the bathroom. You know what I mean? We don't have a right to be raped, or molested, tortured, and forced into things at that age. But they allowed that to happen, and now that it comes forward, the state police, they made a special unit, like an investigation unit with the state police, 
which I've sat down for hours and hours talking to them to arrest these people and charge them, you know what I mean? But what about continuing to make sure this doesn't happen? Changing the way they do things. Yeah. Changing the way they investigate. You know what I mean? Like, DCYF failed so many kids because they never, they're supposed to come in every month and sit down with you when you're in YDC and evaluate you and see where you're at to see if you're ready to be transitioned into another home. You know what I mean? While you're while I was there, they told me, you're not going to be there long. We're just have you here so that you're safe until we can get a foster home for you to go to. Well, that never happened. They never came and asked me if I was doing all right or check on me. They basically forgot about me in there. They threw me in there and forgot, you know, like. It, and so. Is there any sort of benefit? So the guards or these staff members, yeah. um, they were arrested and charged and put in jail. Correct. And where are they now? Out on bail. They're all out on bail? They're, they only got two days. Everyone got held for two days. Two days. And then the judge released them all on bail. My, my, the person that did it to me, Stanley Watson, he has trial set for March 13, 2023. Wow. Good. We're going to have to right. put an event for that. Right. But that's, like, so far away and he's, he's just living... Because of COVID and everything like that. And because of all of the... Charges coming forward and like that, that the load is so bad, like so big that they don't know what to do. They actually froze the lawsuit for a while, and then they brought it, but they opened it back up. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so much stuff that. So it's, does he have a lot of? I'm sorry. Does but, he have a lot of um, victims? He Stan? has two victims. He has two victims. Me and someone else. I believe the second victim is the one that I told you about, Bryson, that he took over from Brazil. Mm-hmm. I believe that's his, I don't quote me on that. I know I'm one of them. I believe he's the other one. And, and that we know of. That's that come of. forward. Right. right. And I mean, I can't, I just can't. If they're, if they're that comfortable to do like he did to me, like, how many more did he do it to? Seems like, like he had a pretty good system. Right. Like, these people weren't afraid to molest us. They weren't afraid to have us get naked and wrestle. Right. You know what I mean? Like, who does that at 13 years old? Who wants to see 13 year olds wrestle naked? You know what I mean? These guys stood there, some of them with their phones, and they laughed and they bet to see who would win. Like, we would have to fight naked and it, until someone was knocked out. It was, it was like craziness. Like, that was their entertainment. Like, they got off on that. And, and I mean, how many people would be in that room? There was like seven of us. And, and, and the, the people watching? Oh, there was three guards. Yeah. Yeah, there's three staff members and one would stand on the right side one would stand on the left one would stand in the middle and they would make sure that like we couldn't get out of that area you know what I mean and then they would pick you two you're gonna fight and then until one of us got knocked out or thrown or couldn't get back up then they would switch it out and then if you ask for medical attention we never saw medical never there was no medical never and some of the nurses actually covered up like they would cover up the documents they would write different things you know what I mean? Oh, he broke his ankle by playing basketball. It's winter time. No one was playing basketball. It wasn't even in the gym. It was because this, of wrestling naked, the, the leg would get broken. You know what I mean? They would say, oh, no, we brought him to the gym, and he was playing basketball, and he broke his, 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 his foot, which wasn't the case. But they would believe the staff over us because we're juvenile advocates in a jail that break the law, and we're not believable. You know what I mean? So that's the way they made us look. But if and so many people are coming forward since 1930, they're, I mean, and they... Yeah, such and a nothing's happened. Like, right now, they're trying to basically push everybody that's involved with this. They want us to sign into a naked plea and put our faith back into the state on what they believe we're allowed to get for money. Like, they tried saying, okay, if you were raped once, then you can get 150000 if you, you know what I mean, like, depending on what was done to you, their category is like the payment. It's crazy. And they want everyone to sign into it because when you sign into it, then you give up all your rights to sue, to go to court. Everything you just give it up. So you have to sign that. Talk about it. You sign that agreement. This is how my lawyer said. You're going to sit down with, with, they have a special, like, um, cabinet for this, for this money thing. 
you're going to sit down. First thing you do is you're going to sign over, but you're going to sign your rights away. When you do that, your lawsuit stops. Now you're taken off the docket. That thing will go into a chairman. The chairman will look at it and figure out what you deserve to get. He's going to write down the number and he's going to show it to you. Either you're going to continue to say yes or no. If you say no, then you can back out of it, but then you're put to the bottom of the list for the lawsuit. Now you drop down. Whatever your number you were, now you go to the bottom of it. it it's crazy. It's nuts. And, I mean, and then those people, they're, they're, they're going to be in jail for a long time. I mean, all yeah. the people implicated? Yeah, they're definitely getting charged. And they're what about the 150 people? The 150 people... They've only charged 11 people. So out of all of those people that watched and the they're, nurses and all these people that had correct. seen all they're of trying those to plead, injuries. They're trying to plead the fifth and they're trying to say that because they didn't sexually assault anyone and they, we're going to overlook that and we're only going to go for the ones that physically assaulted the kid. But we're not going to hold these ones responsible. Unless they had any direct involvement. Right. With the, you know, but I that's, mean... I mean, it's it's a whole system. They're they're all. Th this is where it becomes a federal conspiracy issue, I think, and there needs to be an independent federal investigation on this thing. Um, you know, it's just too deeply. It goes all the way through the Sununu family, and the John. And now the attorney general is Sununu's personal lawyer. Was Sununu's personal lawyer before being the you know. So what's really going on here? Um, I don't think that this, I mean, there should be if some sort of federal something. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like, we don't have any rights right now. Like, the state of New Hampshire, I do not trust the state of New Hampshire. You know what I mean? Do I blame them for me being an addict? I'm the one that chose to be an addict, but I'm in recovery now. I've been clean for 11 months. But I had to use to bury all that stuff that was done to me. Because there was no other way to deal with that grief. You know, in the state of New Hampshire, I believe I would have had a better life if I had a different path, if I wasn't put into YDC, if that all didn't happen to me. But I made the best of it and became a better person and became stronger, and I put my belief into God. You know what I mean? That's who my real father is. You know what I mean? So I forgive people, I forgive everybody, I forgive them. But I want justice done, and I want everyone to know yeah. what the state of New Hampshire is doing mm -hmm. and what they were up to for all these years and what they allowed to go on. You know, in Evelyn Blaze, I keep saying her name because she was my case manager for y DCYF, and she had a obligation to keep me safe. And when I reported stuff to her, she did not do anything about it. She always took the staff members at YDC side. Why do you think that? Why Why do you think that that would be that they were? I mean, I, I just get back to where's the incentive? Like, why Why the cover up? Paycheck. Pay. They get paid to cover up for right. millennials. You won't have a job if you could tell on everybody who's corrupt. Right. Why would you want a job in a place where all of that is going on? State workers. Are all family members and friends in, like he said, cult? They're obviously in some sort of sexual debauchery, rape cult. Right. And most law enforcement, 40% of them beat their wives. Okay, so all these back the blue people, get over it. Cops are people, judges are people, guards are people, doctors are people. They're not perfect, they're not better than anyone else. They're told what to do, they follow a script. They go to school and they're told, do this, do that, do that. I mean, the cops don't even get taught the Constitution. So, to, and I used to think, I, I used to think I should be able to trust the guard and the nurse and, right. and the doctor that I go to to see to get, you know, medical treatment for my ailments. But they don't care and they don't have your best interests at heart. They want their paycheck. Yeah. They have to bill insurance. They have to see you. They have to. Do, it's just about cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, and you can't bite the hand that feeds you. Right. So if you speak out against the corruption of the pharmaceutical industry or the cops or the judges, and the and the, you won't have a career in that easy. You don't have to do anything, and you can be a tyrant, and you can get away with literally murder and rape. Yeah, they turn their back. Why they're children? Of course, I mean, it's it doesn't. So, the, the, it's the, so <laughs> awful. Like I know. I mean, maybe I'm just 
But it's just, it, they're children. People trust authority, like I said in the first interview. People trust authority. Unfortunately, authority is nothing more than another person. I take authority over myself and my surroundings. But they're supposed to be. They're supposed to. I mean, they there are. are. There are. They some should be. People, but it's tried strange. for capital. This this should be a capital crime, it, yeah. and they should be strung up in a, in a row, one by one, and they should let the kids pull the lever. That's what I think. That I, I think so too, because you ruin. No. You just ruin people's Tom, lives. I mean, how many lives have they ruined? Because it's well, families. They I mean, can be it, forgiven when they're swinging. They, I mean, it's best to always forgive, but it's always, I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, there needs to be serious punishment because it's, it's. Make not, an example. We need to, re, it goes, this goes all the way into the Epstein thing and the royal family and, and. You know, Daddy Sununu, and now the son, and what is he into? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it, the corruption is so deep that we need to get rid of the entire federal government, focus hyper local. Everyone should just, we should all secede, national divorce. We can, we can figure it out. You have, you know, arrangements with the states next to each other and everything, and we'll still have laws and rules, and we can still trade amongst each other and all that. But we don't need the federal government, which isn't doing anything, providing these programs. I mean, was YDC getting federal money? You're telling me the feds shouldn't be investigating this thing when they were getting federal funding in, all, in, in, in the, the, the lack of oversight and transparency here? Um, so, yeah, I, the, I think the problem is people trusting the government to handle their problems when you should handle your problems. Everybody needs to handle their their own problems, and if you know, I I think you should have shot that dude right in the face that day. Then that would have took care of the situation. No, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I, well, I mean it. You know, we need. But I think, like you know, I think what I don't know. It's just what do you think the you know I, I when I was talking to Frank, I think that we need to um, the average person needs to stand up. Like, we all need to stand up. Yeah, that's why I'm standing up and yep. I'm speaking about this. Like, this is hard for me because I, from my own recovery, from my own self-worth, I had to say something because no one's going to know if we don't speak up and say anything. Yeah. And I haven't heard anybody in this case that something's happened besides Dave Meehan say, some, say stuff. So, I'm a living proof that went through this. So, now I'm telling it so that everyone out there knows... How the state of New Hampshire, Christian Nunu, the prosecutors, everybody, how they are trying to cover this up and make us out to be either liars or like we're addicts, we've been in prison, we have a criminal record. So they say, okay, you have a criminal record, so now you're you, we can't really trust you, okay? So now your now your credibility goes right down the drain. So they try to make us look like we're the bad people. We can't believe them. This is all a lie. You have this guy right here, the state worker, Stan Watson. He doesn't have a criminal record. His father was the chief of police in Merrimack. So why would he do all that? But this one here, he has drug convictions. He has conviction. Uh, he's been in jail. He's uh, got reports of false information when he was in juvenile detention. So they just try to twist it. They twist it to the way they want it. They've been, they, they, I mean, they've been operating on this right. program. This is how they've been getting away with it. And they right. pass it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. How is we can go do this to this kid. And they're not going to know. Well, they, we just cover it all up. And we lie for each right. other. And they, you know, nobody's going to believe them. That's <laughs> like, for instance, that's like, okay, so you have the chief of police of a town that commits a crime. And then the town says, okay, chief, I want you to investigate that crime. Of course, he's not going to find himself guilty. They're having a state of New Hampshire investigate their own people. And nothing's gonna happen. They're trying to say for Dave, um, what was his name? Meehan. No, the um, the one that said that he's not credible. He can't do it because he's frail. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Frank. Davis. Frank Davis. They're trying to say that he has to plead the fifth because he's frail. He has health issues, so we can't really prosecute him. So we're gonna excuse <laughs> him. But that guy sat there and raped and molested children. When he was younger, he was fine to do that. But now that he's frail. And now that he's not feeling well, they're trying to t say that he's got to plead the fifth, and we're gonna. We're they're gonna say he's incompetent. incompetent. He doesn't remember anything, right. and they're gonna come. And, and I he, bet you. He did. And he was. He's he, a, yeah. And you know. Yeah. You know why 
why it'll work because he has dirt on everybody else. Right. And so he's pulling his chips. He's like, he's you don't want him. me to say this. You don't want me to say that about you. You don't want me to say that. Then, you know, yeah, you're going to do that. You guys got to get me off of this thing. Right. Like, like there was two of them that got arrested in the beginning when Dave Meehan reported this. One of the guys worked for the Boston Red Sox. Um, Busky. I can't, I can't, there's two people. I can't remember their names. But they were the first two that got arrested and were charged with, I don't know, like 32 different counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault, putting a gun to his head, forcing him to do it, oral sex or something like that. At YDC, they had a gun? No, or, he took him from YDC okay. on a little trip, okay. brought him to his apartment, took a gun, held it to his head, and said, if you do not give me oral sex, I'll blow your head off. And held the gun to his head while he was giving him oral sex. <sighs> they charged him, but then they threw the charges out because there was more people that came forward, so they wanted to like recharge everything. So they threw the charges out the first time, and then they brought the charges first back again. But yeah, it, Dave Meehan went into detail, detail how he took him on a trip. He was supposed to bring him to a basketball game, and he took a route. T- he took like a detour, brought him to his house, took a nine millimeter, showed it to him, cocked it, put it to his head, and forced him to get moral sex with the gun pointed to his head. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so the state, I don't know, it's just, the state's messed up. I mean, what, what can, what can the, the, the people of New Hampshire do? The people for New Hampshire can hold the state of New Hampshire responsible, stand up and say, what is going on here? We have these juveniles that were innocent children that got put in there, maybe for running away, like I did, or maybe for stealing a candy bar, or, or something, but they're doing this because something's happening behind the scenes. Either they're getting abused at home or they're getting molested at home. So they're acting out because they want help. The only way they know how to act or out is they don't have like, food. They're well, stealing they have, food. Right. So, I mean. so they throw them into YAC. This New Hampshire needs to say, we need to stop this. We need to investigate these people that did these things. We need to shut down YAC. And shut down YAC. Every time I go by there, I get night terrors. I get shooken up. I can't even, like, my breath, like, because it is a miserable sight. It has so many bad memories by looking at that place. But they need to hold them responsible and say, we need to convict these people. We need to hold the other 150 people that turned a blind eye, hold them all responsible. Oh what about the, the all of the governors that were, I mean, all of these people. Everybody that was in higher positions at that point in time should have done something. Right, like, I mean, uh, a lot of, when I talk to people about the senior news center um or ydc they they say whoa you know it has his name on it but it doesn't mean anything and and i I why did it change why did i want to know the history why did it change from ydc to the sununi youth center what why did it change what was the reasoning behind that what was the rationale and why is it still there? Why, if, if it's such a horrible place, you know, which it is, we do know, why is he still leaving his name on there? Why is he not petitioning to have his name removed immediately? Because he'd be admitting fault. He knows he's involved in it. He was raping kids at the White House. Okay? So. <sighs> it's, but, but I mean, how, I don't understand how, I mean, like, when I talk to people about it, they're like, oh, you know, the governor doesn't have anything to do with it. Of course he does. And, and I'm, I'm like, I'm, because, you know, I, I think that they should all be held. If anybody yeah. was, was, you know, I think the governor should be held responsible. He should know what's happening mm-hmm. in that. And he probably, and he does. And if he doesn't know it, then he's not doing his job. Right. right. So and he, he should be firing, you, every, he should be firing every everybody person. involved in this. Who, he should be firing them and he should be holding them all accountable. 100%. He needs to shut down why he's If he wasn't involved with this at all and he's innocent, then he needs to step up and say, okay, everybody mm-hmm. that was involved needs to be arrested, charged, and held responsible I think this is the next rally in Newfields outside his house. Right. Like, Shut down YDC. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, I mean... Even, this, even the rep to set the rep there, uh, Corey... What was Bernard? Uh, Corey uh, um, Belanger. Corey Belanger. He went to YDC. He's a step, state rep out of Rochester. And he was raped and molested at YDC. Mm-hmm. He even says it. He said to Chris Nuna when he met him for the first time, he says, I want to be there with a sledgehammer when that building gets torn down. He the asked Chris Nuna for that. He asked, can I have that privilege to have a sledgehammer because I want to knock down those memories of me being raped and molested. 
He didn't act on that. They need to search again. I'm going to reiterate from the first interview. Right. Cadaver dogs and sonic machines to look for shallow graves. And they did that in Florida and they found all these shallow graves. They also, because the river's right there, they need to dredge the river. Um, there needs to be a full-on investigation into this YDC thing. Do you think New Hampshire will do that? No, the feds need to. This is why. So this, this video and the information from the discovery needs to get out to bigger media sources. Everybody should be sending this to, you know, WMUR, Washington Post, um, CNN, all these things. And... This thing needs to be exposed because this has happened elsewhere in the country, like I said, in Florida, but now it's here in New Hampshire and it's been going on and there has not been a full on investigation for the whole entire property and all the people that were involved, uh, all the different families and, you know, who is still working for the state that helped cover this thing up. It, it's, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why, like more people we, we we need to get people really now that the election that, yes this is this should be all that election nonsense this is the stuff that's important this, this is, is the stuff that we should be putting our energy into it ruined my life and i had to learn how to deal with it and i kind of went along the wrong way part of my life with addiction but i was able to get clean and get on top of this. And now that I'm on top of my sobriety, now that I have a clear mind and I ha and I don't feel embarrassed and I don't feel less of a person because it's happening because I couldn't control this. Now I know that I was a victim, that I couldn't stop it. So it doesn't make me any less of a person. But I want the state of New Hampshire, the people of state, the people that live in New Hampshire that vote for Christian Nunu, that vote for these people to be in these higher positions, I need you to look at this and step back and say, what do we do to help these kids so that it doesn't happen, continue to happen, and that this doesn't continue to go on, this cult, this molestation, people not believing. There needs to be action taken, and there needs to be a strong action and shut this down, and people need to be held responsible. You're voting for these people that are covering this up. Your child could have been in that, could be put into a juvenile detention center. This could happen to your child. If people got in an accident and, two, and the parents die and the kids get put into foster care and right. then they have to, oh, let's put them in YDC for a little bit. And now your kid's going to be entitled and subjected to doing all of this because nothing's being done to these people, really. All the people that turn a blind eye are probably still in these positions and because they got away with it right now. They can get away with it again, so now they feel like they're untouchable. I do have a solution, if you guys want to hear. Yeah. So my solution is body cams. Correct. 24-7 body cams, always on. They can't turn them off. They get on the shift. They put their body cam on. It starts recording audio, and they can't. They, it's, it's always 24-7 recording. And um, then... A separate board of people can review any time there's an incident reported. They go and check the body cam footage. Right. And if there was a malfunction or something like that, then there needs to also be redundant. There should be... I know there's already video cameras all over the facility right. as but well. The but facility, there's, there, was no camera. there was places that didn't have cameras in the dungeon and everything like right. that. So The only uh, building that had... Starkhouse didn't have cameras. Starkhouse didn't have cameras. Spalding only had cameras in the hallways and in the kitchen but it didn't have them in like the back area or like the living room and all that what there was no cameras like where the shower was and all mm -hmm. there's no cameras there and they know those these right. you know so there needs to be more transparency and it can be done and the kids privacy can be kept and all that and there needs to be an outside person that does not work for YDC that the kids can go to that can say something and they'll actually investigate the crime mm -hmm. if there is one done. The like, case manager is not that person. Case manager is not that no, person. Works for YDC. No, right. If if something is reported, be a liaison that if, works. if something's reported about it, they can't investigate. They have to call in maybe this new state police unit right. or something. Right. That that is definitely has to yeah. be part of this new process. Right. 
And DCYF needs to be held responsible. Evelyn Blaze. She went from being a case manager to being running DCYF. How can you sit there and say, I'm going to allow you to bypass the classes you need to take? Is she being held responsible? How do you We're think she it. got promoted to the top dog? Right. She was covering everything up. She right. was doing what she was supposed right. to do. Right. No. She was doing what they wanted them to do, right. not what like not the right thing. She was covering everything up. Right. So let's put her in the top position. Correct. So she, she's being sued. They get rewarded for that. DCYF like, is, is being sued. She's not individually being sued. She should be. She should, she be, should be the one that should help. She should be charged for allowing me to go to a house that I just told you I was being raped by him. I think you're aiding and abetting. Aiding and abetting a fugitive. Uh, it, it is. Well, it's all, it's conspiracy. It's conspiracy, 100%. And um, uh, some sort of covering up evidence or right. withholding or not reporting a crime, withholding evidence, um, It's like you go falsifying to, evidence. If you go to a doctor's office and you tell, or a counselor, Let's say you go to Riverbend, and you say to the person, you say, look, I feel suicidal. She has a duty to report that. Yeah. If you said you killed someone, she has. they tell you that stuff. Well, I mean, in, in, at YDC and in jail, you say you're suicidal sometimes, and they don't even care. They say kill oh, yourself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, I mean, do you have anything else you want to say? No, I just, I just want everyone to know what's going on, and I need people to stand up and act on this. Don't allow it to keep going on. I'm 40 years old, and I went through a terrible childhood. And now I'm speaking up because I want it to stop and not happen to other children out there. Children deserve the right to grow up healthy, happy, and enjoy life. This is a live free or die country. That doesn't mean you can sit there and molest children and get away with it. But right now, that's what it looks like with Christian Nuno because everything is being allowed to be done now. So He's not saying anything about it. No, he's not going to say anything about it. He's letting his puppets get rid of it, basically. You know, it's a cover-up. That's all it is. You know what I mean? Like, the Catholic Church, when that all happened, mm -hmm. they got more results done than we did. You know what I mean? Like, they were held responsible. You know what I mean? They made sure that was not covered up. I don't know. Well, I think, at, at some point, eventually. I, I, <laughs> so think, yeah. I think there's probably stuff that we don't know about. Yeah, so. But it's... Um, hey, and uh, I want to thank you, brother. Yeah. 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 It takes you. a lot to come out and do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm going to write an article, and I, I want you to look at it. And, yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, If there's anything that I can do for you. I just, I pray every night, and I know that God's going to make this right. You know what I mean? This, they're going to be held accountable. When they go to that gate, and our, you know, they're going to be held responsible for what they did. You know what I mean? So they got to make peace with themselves. But we have an obligation, like, these people in higher positions, we vote them into those positions to make sure shit like this doesn't happen. Okay. We have state police. We have detectives to report crimes to. And if we report it to them and nothing happens... Why are they even there? It's a good question. They're You're getting paid to be in that position, but then you turn a blind eye so that an innocent child can get molested and raped and cry himself to sleep with bloodiness, bloody sheets and everything, and nothing gets done. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Like, I got to points where I wanted to kill myself because I thought that's the only way to make a stop. I know one night I took 300 pills of ibuprofen thinking that would kill me because I didn't want him to molest me that night at 11 o'clock because I was sore from the night before. You know, I got to that extent where I just wanted it to end and the only way I knew how to end it was to kill myself. But obviously God didn't want that because it didn't happen. But we should never have to go to that extent. We shouldn't have to be put to that. <sighs> All right. Amen. Yeah. We'll end there. All right. Oh.